I'm going to show you how to put together a seller financed offer on this investment property. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks, the show where I help investors like you make money investing in real estate. And the man I'm working with today is my dude, Tim. Tim, you're an out-of-state investor who your situation is you can't qualify for traditional financing. So you and I have been focusing on seller financing, right? We've been looking to put together seller financing deals for you, right? So, folks, if you're out there and you want to get in the game, but you could only do so uh, via seller financing because you don't have enough cash or credit to go the traditional route, we can help. we got two avenues to help you. One, you can do MLS search and analysis shows with me like Tim has been doing, right? Send my team an email at sales at holtonweiss.com if you have questions or go ahead and click the link below to purchase those. Or you could even start things off by doing our Seller Financing 101 course, the ultimate guide to seller financing real estate in the real world, right? If you're in the Cleveland market, you're probably best uh, off to work with me directly one-on-one -on -one to help you do deals in Cleveland with seller financing. But if you're in any other market out there in the world, folks, I think the course is really going to help you because the tools that I teach you uh, are going to be able to be applied everywhere, right? It's uh, 10 hours of content, right? So you're going to get a lot, a big bang for your buck. That's also in the show notes, so you can click the education tab on holdenwise.com. We also have a similar course uh, for those folks trying to wholesale, right? Wholesaling, seller financing. Both of those courses are available, and both of those courses are going to work for people uh, who typically cannot get traditional financing, right? So if you've fallen into one of those categories, you want to check out those courses. Now, Tim. On to you, brother. This deal, I don't have a lot of info on the outside of the house, um, but it looks to be in pretty good shape, right? We have nice vinyl siding, okay? And they're asking a really attractive price for this thing. 3165 West 97th, Cleveland, 44102. Just hit the market. We're probably going to want to move quick because it's priced stupid low. 85 grand. Now, each of these are three bedroom units, right? So 850, 850, 1700 a month, okay? In a projected rent, 20,400 in yearly rent, right? That should after fixed and variable expense estimates, Tim, kick off approximately $10,479. Now, truth be told, I'm slightly confused what they got going on because they didn't include any interior picks. And what the listing agent is saying is kind of weird to me. He's saying potential investment income is between $1,500 and $1,800 or more, depending on the number of people in each. I don't understand what the fuck he's talking about. You don't rent a unit based on the number of motherfuckers in your unit. You just rent the fucking unit, right? So I don't know what the current owner is currently got going on. Maybe he is doing like a rent uh, by the room thing where you like have the kitchen be shared and then you rent the individual rooms. Don't fucking do that. That's a horrible business model, right? Uh, if you do that in a neighborhood like this, right, like this is like a, I don't know, C-grade neighborhood, you're just getting transients, druggies, hookers. It's a whole fucking, you don't want to do that. There's a lot of easier ways to make money, right? So... Uh, during the due diligence process, we'll have to investigate, see if they are renting by the room. Uh, but the price I gave you is just what you'd normally rent the unit for, right? So whether it's one adult renting it, they're paying 850 Whether it's two adults, they're paying 850 Two adults, two kids, they're paying 850 You can't discriminate. You can't be like, oh, I'm only going to rent it to one adult because they'll use less water than uh, this dude with his girlfriend and their kids. You can't do that. That's against fair housing, right? Keep that in mind. So you just you get rent, right? Market rent for the units is 850 okay? So all that said... If you could pick it up at 85 under normal circumstances, it'd be a great deal because you'd be making approximately $10,479 a year after all things are said and done. Operating it as a normal rental, probably Section 8 rental would be the best thing. But you, Tim, you want to seller finance it. And the seller has said they're open to seller financing, okay? But this is the thing. It's such an attractive price point. It's a pretty good neighborhood. It's got a lot of potential here. 
if you want to do seller financing, Tim, you're going to need to come over the top, right? This is seller financing in the real world. This is the kind of stuff I talk about on the course, folks. I'm not just going to be like, yo, dude, let's just kick them there, kick them a lowball offer because they aren't going to fucking accept that, bro. Moral of the story is there's a lot of people who are going to be bidding on this, dude. People are probably going to be bidding cash, right? So if you want any reasonable chance of getting this one to close, right, you got to come way over the top. So I think we come at 105, and then we do normal terms. Normal terms you get from a bank. You're not able to get it from a bank uh, due to credit and income situations, right? So you have to be honest with yourself what you bring to the table. You have to understand that a bank is not going to give me the loan because I am a high-risk debtor, okay? Well, the seller, he's going to have to analyze that level of risk himself as well, right? You are more risky than any other debtor out there. And you know what's more risky than cash? Debtors. A good debtor is more risky than cash. And then there's a risky debtor, right? So you're a couple levels down. So because of that, you got to make it attractive for him, right? It's risk versus reward for the seller. If you're trying to get seller finance deals to go through, folks, I myself, I've done millions of dollars of seller finance deals in my life. The most important thing is you have to focus on the seller making the seller happy. All the other gurus out there, all the other coaches, all the other programs teaching you guys seller financing. What is the one consistent thing with all of those programs? They're geared towards buyers, right? Buyers, buyers, buyers. Nobody's marketing a program to sellers. Because if you get seller financing as a buyer, you're getting the better end of the stick. You're the one who wants to figure it out. Sellers aren't like, oh, God, everybody's offering me cash for my property. Stop! I don't want cash! I just want to get monthly payments! There ain't no fucking market of sellers who are trying to figure out how to get the cash to stop coming in, right? That's not how it works. It's like a bar, right? Bars do ladies' nights where ladies drink for free. Why? Because if you stock your bar full of ladies, the dudes will follow. There ain't no fucking dudes night, right? Nobody fucking cares. If dudes are stocked in the bar, right? You get a bar stocked with dudes. Everyone's going. Nobody wants to be there, right? Same thing. You don't market seller financing courses to sellers because you don't have to. They're not looking for it. It's not a product they want to buy. You got to market it to buyers. And people always do that, and they make these courses, and they make all this stuff, and they make it seem super duper easy, and then it doesn't really work in the real world, right? So that's why my course is awesome, and that's why we need to focus on making the seller happy because you need two to tango, baby. Oftentimes, it's not like the buyer's like, hey, dog, let's do a deal, and the seller's like, all right, dog, let's do seller financing, no cash, and then the buyer's like, no, nah, dog, I want to pay cash. That's not how it goes, right? If there's one party that's saying, no, motherfucker, we ain't doing seller financing, it's the seller, right? So you got to please the seller. And because of that, you got to make it worth their while. So my opinion, my opinion, Tim, we got to go 105. 105, 25% down. So you put down 26250 Show the seller you're willing to put skin in the game. Seller, man, what if you don't pay me, Tim? Well, hey, bro, I already put up twenty six two fifty, dog. I don't want to lose twenty six grand. Not to mention I'm paying you $20,000 more than everybody else. Not to mention you get the interest. By the time this 30-year note's done, I will have probably paid you about two hundred grand. So you can either sell it to everybody else right now, cash for eighty five, or you go with me over 30 years, you're making two hundred, right? You invested in rental income because you like monthly payments and you're trying to maximize your money, right? So this does allow you to maximize your money, and I'm trying to reduce your level of risk in dealing with me because I'm giving you a high down payment and I'm paying a $20,000 premium, right? And the seller might still not take that because somebody else might be like, yo, 85 cash, call it a day, right? So uh, I can't guarantee that this one goes through, Tim, because I think there's going to be a lot of people that want it. It's a pretty desirable property, honestly. Uh, but if you do got a shot, you got to take your shot, right? You ain't going to make the shot if you don't take it. So I think we got to take our shot. 105K, bro. 25K down. The rest finance, 78,750, right? So after all that's factored in, assuming we get market rent tenants in there at uh, 850 a pop, bro, 25% cash on cash return, right? That's awesome. That's you turning out a 25% cash on cash return. That's you turning something into nothing, right? And that's what seller financing allows you to do. Speaking of uh, turning something into nothing, dude, I remember my, my I've done a lot of really creative seller finance 
deals. And I talk about all of them in my seller finance course, of course, uh, at length. And one, we do a whole chapter on this one, right? We do a whole chapter on this, uh, a pretty big case study. Uh, I was able to actually buy a million dollar apartment complex with no money down, right? No money down. Now, that was a very uh, complicated and high level deal, right? That deal actually involved uh, is an apartment complex, but there's three separate buildings, all six units apiece, 18 total units. So what we did with that, we, we did this whole creative thing, right? Uh, we put together the deal uh, with some bank financing, some seller financing, a cross-collateralized property, a JV, and a kickback. The whole thing was pretty wild. We talk about it, right? But that's the kind of thing, right? If you can figure out what everybody wants, and you could find a way to deliver it, you can get what you want. And what I wanted at that time was to own a fucking million-dollar apartment building, and I wanted to do it without putting up any fucking money, right? So I figured out what everybody else in it wanted, right? Figured out what my partners wanted. Figure out what the seller wanted. Figure out what the other bank wanted, right? Figured everybody out, got everybody what they wanted, and then I got what I want, a fucking million-dollar 18-unit complex, right? So with seller financing, what we can do is limited only by our imagination. But remember, as the buyer, you're coming up with all this stuff, but it's typically the seller's like, no, nah, I don't want that. No, nah, I don't want that. No, nah, I don't want that, right? So when you're coming up with a strategy on what to do, man, you got to figure out what the seller wants. And in this situation, my opinion, the seller probably wants more money. So that's why to try to make this happen, bro, we got to go 20 grand over list with a big old down payment, let me know. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.